Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I've been down here at Cherry Grove Beach in South Carolina for several days, and I've spent a lot of time out here in these amazing marshes that you can see behind me. And what have I been observing here is fiddler crabs. So this episode is going to be all the things I learned about fiddler crabs from both watching them here in the marshes and doing some research while I was here. Fascinating, fascinating story. Stay tuned for this episode that's all about amazing fiddler crabs. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. It's the first week of May and I'm out here in these marshlands and there's just such an abundance of bird life and wildlife. This is the nurseries of the sea. So many species of organisms that live in our oceans begin their life here in these marshes. It is such a critical, critical habitat for all living things in the ocean. And here are millions upon millions of fiddler crabs. An acre of marshland can have anywhere between a million up to eight million fiddler crabs living in that single acre. The abundance, the biomass is absolutely staggering. By burrowing, sometimes 12 inches up to two feet deep into these sediments, the fiddler crabs play a huge role in bioturbation and aerating the soil in these marshlands, making it more effective for these marsh grasses to be able to grow. They bring nutrients up to the surface. They bring oxygen down into the sediments to allow higher rates of bacterial and fungal decomposition. And by feeding on organic matter, and converting it into crab biomass. They convert energy that can be moved up through the food chain just by their sheer numbers. They're an important part of the diet of marshland birds and other marsh wildlife. The species I've been observing here is the sand fiddler crab. You can recognize it by these purple markings on its back and there's great variation from crab to crab in the purple and the arrangement but the sand fiddler crab always has this purple marking on its back and in this one it's really quite spectacular fiddler crabs display sexual dimorphism it's really easy to tell a male fiddler crab from a female the males have this very enlarged claw, and the function of this enlarged claw is for ritualistic battles and territorial displays with other males, as well as a key role in attracting females. Animals develop traits and evolve over time to have traits that make them better able to survive in their environment. The interesting thing about the fiddler crab's evolution of this claw is that it's merely for sexual reproduction. It doesn't increase their survival. In fact, it may even be a deficit to survival. Male fiddler crabs can only eat with one of their chelicerae. They can't eat with that big, big claw. This very large male claw is strictly for effectiveness in finding a mate. In fact, having that oversized claw might even be a detriment to survival, and it comes with a very high metabolic cost. The male fiddler crabs as well can only feed with one of their front feet, while the females use two feet in order to feed. The claw of these male fiddler crabs can sometimes reach up to 60% of their body weight. Biological research studies have shown that for fiddler crabs, size in fact does matter. The fiddler crabs with the larger claw are the ones that are most likely to attract a female and produce offspring. 
It's hypothesized that the females are attracted to the males with the larger claw. The large claw represents a very healthy individual and with those crabs with a larger claw also have a larger burrows, which may be more effective for egg development. Hermit crabs are fascinating to watch, and they have so many highly developed ritualistic behaviors that include this uh, waving of the big claw, uh, stamping their feet, vibrations that convey all sorts of different meanings to males around them and to females that they're trying to attract for reproduction. Another really interesting feature of fiddler crabs is that they have eyes on a stalk. And these stalked eyes are very important in their survival and also in their social interactions. They can keep engaged watching crabs around them at their level, but the eyes also let them see predators, which is primarily birds coming. And these crabs will dive down into these burrows in a moment's notice, in a less than a second probably, as even I show up, they dive all of these crabs that are out dive straight down into their burrows to hide from danger. Once the threat is over, they re-emerge and get back to the business of eating, building burrows, and mating displays. It's really, really remarkable how much dirt is moved every single day by these organisms. Between every tide, two times a day, you can see all of this material that has been brought up from the ground. It's really substantial. It comes up as little balls because they use all of their legs in order to sift through to remove any particulate, detritus, uh, nutritious microorganisms that might be decaying the organic matter in there. And this is what they consume and turn into biomass. Just look at the amount of material that has been moved by this single crab since the last tide. It's really, really remarkable. It's an amazing thing to witness and think there are millions of crabs out here doing all of this movement of the earth. Some crabs will pile their bits of dirt right around their opening and others will move this material a significant distance away from their burrow. Now another fascinating thing about these burrows that go down a foot to sometimes two feet is that during the day when the tide is out they can go down and reach water at the bottom of their burrows. Fiddler crabs actually breathe with wet gills that they have to keep constantly wet inside their bodies. And when the tide comes in, however, they'll block off the opening to their mud tubes and sit in an airspace inside. So while the Fiddler crabs don't actually breathe underwater. They need air to breathe. They don't breathe underwater for long periods of time, but they do need to keep those internal gills moist. I had an amazing time here uh, for four or five days watching these fiddler crabs and learning about them. And I hope that you learned something from me today about these amazing creatures. I hope if you like what I do here, you'll subscribe to my channel, give me a like on this episode, and leave me a comment. I really love hearing from my viewers, and I love responding to your comments as well. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, and turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. But thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door from Cherry Grove, South Carolina.